Let's go ahead and set up conversion tracking for our site. And I'll show you the different options that are available and kind of what they do and how to set them all up. So first, go to the Tools option in the menu at the top and go down to Conversions. And let's pop in here and take a look around. So this is what you see when you first start out because you haven't created any conversions. Once we click this button and create a conversion, this screen here will go away. So let's do that. Click the red button to create a conversion. And here there are four different types of conversions that you can track. First of all, you have website. So you can track purchases, form submissions, other actions on your website using this first option here. You can track app downloads or in-app actions using this second one. And that's not applicable for most advertisers, just the ones who have apps. You can track phone calls. And you can also import offline conversions into AdWords. And I'll talk about each of these in turn. So let's start with website, which uh, is probably one that you'll definitely want to use for your account and for your website. So I'll select that option. First you give it an, a name and give it a name that you can easily recognize when you're looking in your reports later on and need to figure out what conver or which conversion is which. So for example, I'm going to call this contact form. I'm going to create it as if I was tracking contact form submissions on our website. So we'll click done there. The next option is value, how much each conversion is worth to your business. And you've got a couple options here. So you, we could say that each time it happens, it has a specific dollar amount. So for example, if you're selling a course that's $40, $40 and every time someone hits the thank you page, you know you just made $40, then you could put that dollar amount right here. Um, if the value of the conversion action could vary, then you would go to this option here. You could set a default value. Um, and then if you wanted to have the value dynamically update in AdWords, depending upon, uh, for example, what the dollar amount is shown on your website, then you could create some, some specialized tracking here. Now, the best way to accomplish e-commerce tracking, so tracking any kind of orders that have variable dollar amounts on your website, is to use Google Analytics. And then we can actually import that data into AdWords. And I'll show you how to do that in the near future. Uh, the third option is don't assign a value. And that's what we want in this case because there's no specific dollar amount associated with a contact form. So we'll click Done. And then you have an option. You can count every conversion or you can count one conversion. So here's the, what this means. So for example, it may not be valuable for you to know if someone submits a contact form two times uh, because for the purposes of your uh, of your tracking, just the fact that they send in one contact form, you know that that keyword drove a contact form submission. But if uh, someone placed three orders, three separate orders after clicking an ad, you'd want to know about that and you'd want to know the revenue for each one. So that's basically what these two options here. In this instance is a contact form, so we don't need to know if they uh, submitted more than one contact form per person. So we'll select one and hit done. So we'll count one conversion per converted click. And then for your conversion window, basically um, if someone clicks on an ad, uh, based on these settings, if they click on an ad and the AdWords cookies get added to the browser, they come back to your website within 30 days and make a conversion. That conversion will be attributed to your AdWords click. And the same thing for view through conversion window. So if they saw an ad, for example, a display ad, and then later on came to your website and made a conversion, then if that was within 30 days, that would be tracked back to your campaign. You can uh, change the amount of days. 30 is a, a fine default, and I recommend using that in most instances. But if you want to change that, you're welcome to do so. Then Google has a couple categories, and this is just for pretty much internal use for how you want to categorize things. In this instance, um, this is a contact form, so it's not a sale, it's not a sign up. It could be a lead. I'm going to call it a lead. I could also call it other. Um, I could call it anything I wanted, but I'll call it a lead for these purposes. So we'll click done. And then including conversions. So what does this mean? So if we leave this option checked, then we'll see these conversions in the normal conversion columns in your AdWords reports. If I unchecked it, 
then it would not show up as a conversion. And you would do that if maybe you wanted a record of how many conversions you got in AdWords, but you don't want that to show up in your, your cost per converted click reports or your number of conversions associated with specific campaigns. Um, so in that instance, you would not want to include it in the conversions column. But for probably 95% of conversions, you do want to include them in conversions. So we'll keep that as a default and go ahead and save and continue. All right, so you see it's got the information we just entered here, and then it gives you a tag. Uh, this is an AdWords tag. Here's what you can do with this tag. You can put it on your website on a thank you page. So after someone filled out the contact form, you'd put this on the thank you page. And the fact that they reached that thank you page, which fires this code, means that someone must have filled out the contact form. So that's what creates a, a uh, trigger, or rather that's what triggers a conversion. Now you can also easily um, add this to your website using Google Tag Manager, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, again, I, I recommend you use Google Tag Manager to implement your codes because it just saves so much time and trouble, and it's a super and a free tool. So let's go in here to our container. Let's go ahead and add a new tag. I'll hit the red new button there and you can see they already have a uh, conversion type created for that and you've got two options here AdWords conversion tracking and AdWords remarketing I'll talk about AdWords remarketing separately right now I'll just click on AdWords conversion tracking and then it's going to ask you for a conversion ID so scroll over here or click over here you can see that number right there that's your ad your conversion ID we did not set a conversion value for this conversion so we'll ignore that and we don't need a currency code because we don't have a currency value so we'll ignore all that we don't need any advanced settings so we'll hit continue and then here's an example of how we could fire it on a specific page so we could create a trigger here and we could say contact thank you page we'll name it that and then let's say that the page URL contains this string of text contains contact thank you so what we've just told the system here and we'll save that is that if anyone reaches um, a page that uh, that has the URL or the, the URL can includes contact thank you then it will fire this average conversion tracking code and that will um, trigger a conversion in your AdWords account and we'll call it AdWords conversion contact form and save that so I'm just going to type some random numbers in there for right now um, but you would copy over here in the code you'd copy this Google conversion label that right there and put that into that field and then save all right. It's kind of hard to keep track of uh, <laughs> all the different uh, peculiarities and specific things with tracking and Google's campaigns because they are constantly changing things on us. All right. So go ahead and click done here in the conversion area and done again. And there we go. This, that's the name of the conversion right here. You've got some different information about it. And if we need to edit it, uh, we could edit the name there or we could click on that and edit the settings in here. So that's a, a, t a website conversion. Now let's create another type of conversion. I'm not going to go into apps because that's not applicable to most small businesses. Uh, phone calls is applicable to small businesses, so let's take a look here. The options here under phone calls are for people who call your call extension or your call only ad, uh, not specifically for calls on your website. That's the first option here. For calls on your website, Google does have an option where you can add Google's code to your website and theoretically Google will track how many phone calls you receive from your AdWords campaigns. But sadly, it's not a good solution. It's really complicated to install, really challenging to make it work, and I just don't recommend that you use it because it's it's a <laughs> it's a big pain, honestly. Um, so that's why I'm not really talking much about that option here. And um, let's go ahead and create a call from ad using a call extension. Let's call it calls from ads. Hit done. Don't assign a value because we don't know what each phone call is worth. Call length, let's say if the call is over 30 seconds long, then it's a valid call, potentially valid call. We'll count one conversion per call. 
Conversion window of 30 days, category is a lead, including conversions, yes, and save and continue. And then we'd also have to set up a call extension or a call only add in order to actually use this conversion that we just created. So we'll close that there. Um, and then another option is that you can import offline conversions. What that means, so for example, say you capture the unique Google Click ID of someone who clicked on an ad and then submitted a form or made a phone call using some advanced tracking options, then you could actually import that GCLID back into AdWords and know that a, a specific keyword drove a sale. Not just a lead, but an actual sale if you made that sale offline. Uh, for example, someone came to your, uh, your physical location after submitting a form and completed a sale. It's a pretty advanced feature of AdWords, but it can be super, uh, super helpful, and I use it a lot for many of our clients. If you want to learn more about it, go, just go to Google and type in uh, offline. Uh, let's try tracking offline conversions and it will give you some pretty detailed instructions about how the process works and the code that you need to install on your website which by the way you can use google tag manager to install that code and then how to import that information into adwords all right so those are the conversions uh, those main main types of conversions Let's talk about Google Analytics for a second. You can see down here on the left, you could go to Google Analytics, and you can actually import goals from Google Analytics, which is super helpful. So for example, let's go to our Analytics account here and create a goal, and then we'll import that into AdWords. We'll go up to the Admin tab in Google Analytics, go to Goals, and let's create a new goal. And I'm just going to create a custom goal here. Let's call it contact form. And let's say, so there's four different options here. Uh, if you want to have your goal fired based upon something in the destination URL, so the actual page URL, you can choose that destination. If you want it fired based upon how long someone spent on your site, choose duration. If you want it fired based upon how many pages per screen per session someone viewed, then that's the third option. Or if you want to create um, some special tracking code, so for example, if someone clicks on a button, um, and that could fire some event tracking to your Google Analytics account, which you could then fire a, a, a goal based upon. Let's stick with destination for now. That works really great for uh, thank you pages. I'll hit continue. So let's say that the thank you page begins with contact oops contact thank you and we'll say that's the the thank you page for the contact form we will not assign a value to it no no monetary value and uh, we're not going to worry about a funnel right now it's kind of an advanced feature that most people don't need to worry about and then if we were actually had a valid website which we were working with you could click verify this goal and it would tell you over the last seven days what kind of conversion rate you would have um, if the, if the rules of the goal that we just created were met. Uh, so it's a great way to, to figure out if you set up your goal correctly because it would tell you, you know, if, if no one had visited this page, it would say a 0%. Or if some people had visited that page in the last seven days, it would tell you whatever percent conversion rate that is based upon how many overall uh, visitors you had to your site. So let's go ahead and save that goal. And you can see that shows up now in Google Analytics. Let's go back to AdWords and refresh here and let's see how quickly it recognizes that goal there we go it's pretty much real time so you can see that uh, it will recognize in AdWords any goals in a linked Google Analytics account and then if we wanted to import this into AdWords we would hit that check mark and just click import and uh, we could choose whatever settings we wanted here and import the goals uh, don't assign a conversion value here done import goals and boom now you can see here in our list of conversions uh, contact form all website data that's pulling from analytics now we wouldn't want to have both a contact form tracked in AdWords and in analytics because then we'd be, tr we'd be tracking conversions twice in AdWords and it would give you misleading data so if we wanted to delete a um, delete one of these conversions you just click on this option here and hit removed and there you can see it's removed and then you can go up here and only look at all enabled conversion actions and it would show you all the enabled conversion actions now 
a, a, a question that a lot of advertisers have is, you know, should I track everything in Google Analytics or should I track everything in AdWords? And my rule of thumb is to use both in most inst instances because a couple of reasons there. First of all, they track things a little bit differently, so it can help to have just kind of two different perspectives on how many conversions you got. Also, it can be really helpful if either AdWords or Google Analytics stops working or if the conversion tracking stops working for a while, then first of all, you don't lose all of your data. And second of all, if you're using both Analytics and AdWords to track separately, then you can uh, easily spot when one stops working because the other will keep tracking conversions. The The one major exception to that is e-commerce tracking. Uh, it's, it's much easier to set up e-commerce tracking if you use Google Analytics to do so, and then you can just import that into AdWords, and uh, that makes life pretty easy. To set up e-commerce tracking is a, a bit advanced. You'll want some help from a developer to do that. And I'll show you how to get started on that. Go here under reporting, go down to, on the left here to conversions, go to e-commerce, hit overview. And it, because it hasn't been turned on, it gives you this view here. And then you could click on learn more and find instructions on how to get started in installing the e-commerce tracking on your website. And uh, one thing that, that I help a lot of clients with, the agency I work for, is kind of uh, orchestrating getting this code installed on their website and, and helping their, their developer uh, figure out how to make that happen. So that is, uh, I think, a pretty good overview of how to set up AdWords conversion tracking. You can either use Google Tag Manager to do it, or you can grab the code uh, which is right here for this particular one. You can copy it and then just paste it into whatever content management system you're using or just the back end of whatever website you are using. And that is it.